HQ and today I'm actually talking to Kevin which is one of the developers for Skyseeker which is a game that has a pretty extensive demo out right now. Anyways if you want to get that demo then go in the description below I'm going to have a link to it and the discord group for uh, Skyseeker and the developers of it. Anyways let's get into it. Yeah thanks for having me. Good to see everyone here then. Um, yeah I guess my name's Kevin. I'm one of the devs of Skyseeker. Uh, yeah, Skyseeker was uh, basically our, our summer project. So like a quick backstory on our development group. So our group is Kirisame Jump. Uh, it's basically a bunch of high school friends. So it's like a bunch of these these guys I went to high school with. And we've like still kept in contact over the years. And so, yeah, a lot of us are just really into like game dev and stuff. So if we have free time, we like to you know, put stuff together. Um, yeah, so this summer we said, okay, you know, we don't have anything to do. We're on we're on break because of the the pandemic. We're all at home, so let's let's try and build a good game. Mm -hmm. So Skyseeker was kind of this, this cool idea. Okay, like we play a lot of Metroidvanias. I guess I specifically I'm a big fan of these like 2D, you know, pixel art games, these, like action games. Uh, and also we're big like Pokemon fans. I really love Pokemon because it can like like you can like tell a story based on the guys you get and like you you actually like feel something. And yeah. you kind of feel like, oh, this is my team, you know, it's not just, oh, it's not like everyone's having the same experience. Um, I'm having like my own story. So we wanted to kind of like focus on that aspect. And so kind of like the catching phrase for Skyseeker was like, oh, it's a Metroidvania where you can, you can capture every enemy you see. And so the whole idea is, oh, if you see someone like with a cool behavior, you can just say, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to get that guy. I'm going to play as that guy. And then the rest of the game kind of like branches out from there. Yeah, I mean, it was definitely unique when it came to combat. When it, um, not something I'd seen in another monster taming game before. Definitely. Mm. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do like. So I, I'm a, like about me. I'm just like I have no patience when it comes to games. <laughs> so like I really love Pokemon, but I also do not like turn based combat at all. It's oh. just like something you have to live with. Mm -hmm. So I said, yeah, like. Part of the game was like part of the aim when we're making this is like okay can we get rid of that part can we can we say like oh i want to make this a very like you know reaction based thing while still keeping you know the, like the monster taming part i mean you immediately jump into the action you know uh yeah, in scott yeah, seeker yeah. there's no yeah, no getting into turns it's just you're going up to someone and you start attacking them <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's what i like in my game so that's what i'm gonna that's what i'm gonna put in it uh well, I mean, so it's just a fun summer project that was loosely inspired by Pokemon, and you didn't want to have a turn-based system. Um, of course, one thing I also like about Sky Seeker is the look of it, like the art yeah, with it. Yeah, yeah. It's, oh, def I, uh, it's I definitely you. different from other, I mean, honestly, from most other games, period. Yeah, I don't know. I like, I, I'm a big fan of pixel art. Mm -hmm. Um... I don't know if it's nostalgia or anything, but this is not, it's not like this is like low res pixel art. It's actually kind of like, it takes a long time to draw because we try and make this part like detailed enough so you can tell like, uh, you know, when a, a monster is about to attack, they need to have like a, a charge up animation, right? It needs to be kind of obvious what's going on. Right. Um, what? But I also, yeah, I, 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 yeah, go ahead. Well, it's just the environment's also just nice, even though it's pixel art. I mean, pixel art can look nice, but there's some games that you can tell do pixel art because it's low cost, but and don't really try. But that's not the case with Sky yeah, Seeker. Yeah. No, it's a, it's a deliberate choice. Yeah, but we also try and like cheat a bit. So basically, anything I can. So I'm a I'm a I'm a programmer originally. I'm an artist, like just uh, by necessity almost. Mm -hmm. um, and and there's this other guy on the team who's like way better than me. He does most of the sprite. But we try to use like like shaders and stuff as much as possible to get away with things. Mm. So I think a lot of the the nice parts about Skyseeker are like we have this really good pixelization engine where we can do like particle effects in code, but then it, they get rendered to pixel art in real time. Oh, so it lets us do like these animations where we don't have to like hand draw everything, but it still looks basically in the same style as all the sprites, which are drawn by hand. Yeah, it's not like there's a jarring experience or anything. It all looks within the the look hmm. you know yeah glad to hear but it was a project right like sky seekers kind of done yeah so 
<laughs> this is a trap I always fall in, which is like, this is the best game idea ever. Uh, I'm going to dedicate my life to this and then, and then just, you know, make a good game. And I think that's always the perspective you want when you're looking at a game. But I do think like we had a little bit of scope creep, like the game became too big. Mm-hmm. Our team, we only had like basically three of us working full time during that summer. And then now it's like back to the school year, back to like working. So yeah, I, I, it was like, I think it was a really good idea and I'm happy with what we did. I, I'm proud of the demo, but I don't think we're going to be able to like finish the game, like to work on it, it to the level where I'd be like happy to to release it and say like, oh, I, you know, this is as polished as, as I can make it. Right. Um. So why did it end up getting too big? Was it that from the uh, initial thought it would have been too big or was it something that you all made it and then you kept adding stuff? Um, I think it's a bit of both. <laughs> I think when you start making a game, you're just filled with optimism. You're like, you know, I can do this. This is going to be a good game. It's like, you don't think about how long it's going to take. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also, like, we're just bad at estimating. But I think most people are bad at estimating. It's like, I'm, I think, oh, I'm going to take, you know, a day to write this boss fight. And then, like, you spend the whole week on it because you're like, oh, I want to just make this part really good. Um, I think part of it is, like, we all have a little bit of, like, perfectionism in us. It's mm-hmm. like, oh, I want to make this one aspect as good as possible, and I want to keep iterating on it. Um, and so it became like, yeah, tough, tougher and tougher to to just like finish the things out. Right. I mean, there's a reason why indie games get delayed so much, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, but now I understand you want when you have an idea and you want to execute it, you don't want to do it half. You know, you know what you want. And you just focus on it to the detriment of everything right. else. Exactly. Yeah, you, you just want to make it. You just want to make a good game. I think that's that's very typical. Which you know, understandable. You don't want to put out a game that you wouldn't enjoy. That um, mm-hmm. you wouldn't want people to know that you made. You know. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So I mean, it's completely uh, understandable. And I mean, whatever monster taming game you have, unless you have three or four monsters, quite literally is going to be pretty big scope, even if it's just like a tournament-based game, because monster taming games, it seems like, are pretty big projects, period. Just because what, yeah. you have to have a ton of characters that's not just battling the character, but that you can use in a battle. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah, I think it's part of the part that, this is like a thing about the game that I wouldn't change, but I do have to agree, this is like, a huge part of the reason the game is so hard to make is um, the game is in real time, right? It's not turn-based. And mm-hmm. like when you normally build, like let's say a Metroidvania or something, like and the, the common phrasing is like, oh, you can spend half the dev time uh, like building the controller for the main character. It's like you want to make the jump feel good. You want to make the attack feel good. You want to make everything flow. Mm-hmm. And that's like part of the, the core experience of the game. And so that's where you want to invest in. But then now for Skyseeker, it's like, oh, actually we don't, we can't only build one good control we have to build like 50 of them and then so it's like oh man you know we can spend all this time making one guy good but then they want to play as the other guy like oh we have to polish this whole thing again right because it's not yeah it's not just one player it's these monsters with different abilities right exactly. um whether it's a double jump or say uh the roll forward things like that or the rope swinging Uh, you all you can't make it feel weightless but uh, it has to be at the same time useful. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that was part of the, the idealistic thing is I wanted to make like each monster like feel unique to move to. So it's not like oh we're just gonna give this guy an extra jump or like this guy's gonna move faster. It's like like the rope swinging thing. Like no one else can do that. It's like it completely changes almost how you play when you pick that. Right. So as you pretty much put two big two ideas together that have uh, there's just in by their nature kind of larger scopes. Mm-hmm. So, first off, how many monsters? Okay, how many monsters are on the demo, and how many were? Okay, I guess three questions. One is the demo fully updated. Two, if not, how many monsters are there, and then how many are not included in the present demo? Yeah, so I think the demo. So the demo that's on Steam is probably the best version of the game. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's like we we did a bunch of additional stuff, which I I do think is good, but none of it was like, it was like oh we implemented these systems, we didn't have the time to to polish them, you know, to say that oh these are definitely better. Although there were a few things, so like, uh, I 
I think one of the biggest things that didn't get onto the demo that I, I did really like with this like latest dev build is um, like an architecture rework. Mm -hmm. So sorry, this is like a bit of a tangent, but like I just thought that so a big problem when people were playing the demo is people got lost, and because a lot of the areas look the same. So yeah. you know, I'm actually I, I really like architecture too on the side. So I read a bunch of these like architecture <laughs> books and and basically like found a way to do this like pixel art based like building design that kind of leads you naturally. Uh, like in Pokemon, you don't really think about it, but like between each route, there's like the little like the hub and it's like like a tunnel, right? You go through, it's like a building where you go through it. And it right. just like puts a transition and like it, it kind of like gives you a feel of where you are. So that's something we we went, did and like put everywhere in the, in the map to like show, oh, like this unique building design, the moment you see it, you know, there's going to be like a, a dungeon behind it or there's going to be like a new area. Mm, okay. Uh, in terms of monsters, I think the demo has like 30-ish, and then the full game was supposed to have like 50 to 60, so it was about half. Do you have those down? Did you already have all of the monsters decided, or was it work in progress? Um, yeah, we had some designs, so I think there are like three main things you need to design for each monster. You need to do like the, the looks, <laughs> um, the movement, and then the attacks. And I think for most of the the last 20, we had like either one or two of those down, like, oh, I know what this guy's going to look like, uh, but I don't know like how his unique movement's going to be, or I don't know what his special attack's going to be. So like we, we had ideas, but none of them were like fully like, oh, I can just write this guy in the code and, and he'll work. Right. Well, so let me think. Well, first off, when I did play Sky Seeker, it was definitely... Um... You just kept going in one direction and there's more paths and then you keep you choose one and then there's still another path you know so there's definitely um yeah it seemed like a pretty large map for a demo honestly mm -hmm. uh yeah. which i like because more to play <laughs> yeah yeah the demo was pretty substantial that's why i'm pretty proud of it i think it was like half so the demo had like four maps even if you beat the first map and each map was like pretty sizable so the, the demo was like half the game Mm -hmm. um, in terms of content but it was like okay even if you build all the game in terms of content you, then you have to spend all this time like polishing the game uh, which we didn't like, what was your probably. vision for like the end or is that something that you might use in the future so you don't want to say um i can like i'll, I'll say it <laughs> vaguely i guess i i think it was pretty interesting so we so one thing i i do like in games is good world building uh, and the caveat to that is one thing that I personally, not, I'm not saying everyone, but I personally don't really care that much about games is the storyline. Uh, I usually, I'm the kind of guy who'll like mash A and skip all the dialogue in games. That's why I wanted to not emphasize that. But I do really like games where like the world building is important. So like the, the characters are all, you know, thematic with this level, like the, the visuals tell a story without having to watch cuts. Yes. Yeah. So I really like that part of the Skyseeker. So the, the world building in Skyseeker is uh, the whole thing takes place in this, this like in this like almost sky tree or sky world. Mm -hmm. And everything revolves around this thing called life water. And so all the fauna, uh, when you damage them, they leak blue fluid and that's life water. And your stamina is life water. Your, all your abilities cost life water. And, and the whole thing is like, oh, when your fauna die, they don't really die. They just turn back into life water and you can like summon a them again later and then the the kind of overall story for the world is that actually the the tree itself the world itself is kind of alive and it's like a giant almost piranha plant that's bringing strong fauna to the top where they have a duel and so that at the top you're, you're gonna fight almost like the memories of like all the other strong trainers who've like been there on the way and then the idea was if you play the game again, then you fight like your old characters at the top because they're like recorded in the in the memory of the life water. Like if you can if you can beat that like final basically tournament. That actually sounds pretty cool. Like I guess it would be almost like a yeah. tournament system at the top. Yeah, it's basically yeah, exactly. So a tournament fulfilled with so like your your rival and your side rival would always be there, of course. And then like Basically, if you have past save files, they would also be up there. Oh. Hmm. Well, one thing, I, yeah, Skyseeker, you you can tell a lot just by the environment. You know? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, I really like that. 
And we, we also tried to tell a lot by the fauna design. So the life water analogy also goes um, further than just the world. It's like the mushroom, like the bomb mushrooms, they're, they have gills and they absorb life water from the atmosphere, right? And then oh. you have plants that absorb life water from the ground and like the birds that like, like, like they, they suck the life water from the other guy. So every, every like fauna was built to like kind of match the environment, but also like be part of this like greater almost like food chain or like energy chain where like life water gets transferred from like the, the air and the grass to like the, the fauna. Right. Um, well, well, man, well, there was a question I was trying to think of and I have forgotten it. Um, oh man, I cannot believe I've forgotten, but oh yeah. When did you all decide to stop production? Yeah. It was like a gradual stop. So, I mean, the big milestone was when summer ended, right? And then and then a bunch of us went back to school or began working. And so we had like, we were like, oh, okay, we were working on this full time in the summer, right? We were working like, oh, no, whatever, like eight hours a day. Uh, but then later we're like, okay, you know, maybe we'll continue on the weekends. We'll continue like after, after hours. Um, but it's hard to do that. And I think like, I, I, I like games where like the whole team and like, uh, you can like kind of throw yourself fully into development, you can like think about it day and night. And so during that time, it's like, oh, you know, I could work on this game forever. But the moment you say, okay, you know, I'm gonna invest a little bit of my life into it, it becomes harder and harder to, to kind of keep up because you're, you're just thinking about other things. Right. And you're also not in that mindset of what you need to do or, you know, right, exactly. Yeah, I think if you can commit yourself to a game, it's like everything in life just becomes like a lesson for that game. Like uh, when I go outside and I see like a cool answer, I'm like, oh, I could put that in the game. Or if I see like a cool design, I'm like, oh, I'm going to steal that. Or I'm going to take inspiration. And like everything you do somehow relates back to this, like this goal of making the good game. And that's something you kind of, you have to be in the zone for that to really happen. Well, is there other games you all go, or is, are there other games that you all will do or, um, Will you kind of like eventually come back to Sky Seeker, or at least the concepts behind it, like the idea yeah. behind it? Yeah, I don't, I mean, I'm not going to make any promises, but we're definitely not going to stop making games, that's for sure. I think something I'm going to, I'm planning to do is to make a bunch of like smaller games first. So something we actually did, which I found really enjoyable was before we started Sky Seeker, we made like three or four week-long games and they were basically like oh we're gonna spend a week and just one game and it's gonna be super simple but we're gonna like focus on the core idea and like get practice with doing that and i think that was like the best learning experience i've had is is not building this huge game because when you build a huge game like maybe you spend two hours designing it and then like five hours writing it and then like 20 hours tweaking it right and, and you learn a few things but i think something even better is if you say, you know, I'm going to spend this week on this one idea and just like, I make it good. And then I'm going to completely dip it and uh, build a new idea. And you can just like experiment and like iterate super hard and like what makes, what, what ideas are fun, what ideas are boring, you know, what things look fun, but are actually like annoying. So that, that's kind of the, 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 yeah, the path from now on, I think. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what I've been doing when it comes to, because I'm trying to program a, a game. But that's what okay. I decided to do is smaller games instead of focus. Like I have, okay, I have a bigger game idea in my head. But for example, to learn how to do classes so I can do implement monsters, I'm going to do this game, right. you know. But for the mm -hmm. save and load, I'll do another game, you know. Small things where I can focus yeah, on yeah. one single thing and learn it completely. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. Yeah, I think that's, if, in terms of learning, that's basically the best way to go. Yeah, and but it's also always good to have this like big game idea in the back of your head. You're like, okay, once I'm good, I'm gonna do this, and it's like it's a good motivator. Yeah, I literally have a notebook where whenever I have just yeah. random ideas for it, I put it in, or I'm like, oh, that was a bad idea. Let me just cross that out. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. I do that too. I, I keep a notebook. Well, I'm, I keep mine online, but I just have like a, a a doc where I just throw stuff in when I feel like, oh, this is something that could be useful. Yeah, there was like a whole month where I did nothing but practice pixel art. You know, like. <laughs> Yeah. things like that but um what has been okay first off how many other games have you done besides scott seeker yeah i guess there's 
there's two main games I've worked on other than this. So um, with the same team, I worked on Rain Project. Uh, this was back in high school. <laughs> this was during our senior year when we basically, we had nothing to do. So we said, all right, we're going to build this game. Um, but yeah, that was, um, it was a, a, a fan game of the Toho Project. And I guess for people not aware, Toho is like this bullet hell franchise uh, where it's like you play as one character and the, this, you fight like a series of bosses and the bosses will throw like, you know, a million bullets at you and, and you have to dodge. You can't get hit a single time. I, you know, we, we were just big fans of the series and we said, okay, let's make a spin on this. It's like a, a Toho game, but instead of being like a top-down bullet hell, it's a Metroidvania. Oh. And so the bosses are less about precise dodging and more about like reaction time and uh, and like knowing kind of where to position yourself. Right. I've not played Toho games, but I have listened to quite a bit of the music because the music's yeah, actually pretty freaking music. good. Yeah, the yeah, music's awesome. It's, good. it's great. Yeah. 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 Um, so, yeah, I guess Rain Project, so that was our first game. And then the second game was like a smaller title called mm -hmm. uh, Iwate Mountain Dance. And this one, it wasn't an explicit Toho fan game, but it took like a big inspiration. And it was kind of like a a boss only version of rain project so the whole game is takes place on a single map and there's like 30 bosses and you can fight them in any order mm. and you, you there's no rpg system there's no leveling it's just if you get hit three times during a boss fight you lose mm -hmm. and each boss has like four or five stages and you just you know just be good <laughs> and you can beat it. well is there anything you would have changed about sky seeker or do you think, for what you've had, it's like, no, nah, we couldn't have done better? No, there's a hundred things I think we could have changed, of course. Um, I think overall, no, I'm, I'm still happy with the idea, and I think the idea was really good. I think there's, if there were a few things I would change, number one would be to... So number one has to do with the actual how we developed the game. I think what we did is we made too many levels or we made the scope too big without iterating first. I think something we should have done is like, you know, only put in, you know, like 10 fauna and just made sure that the game was like super fun just with those 10 and just with this one level and just like spent a lot of time there. Uh, because later on when we had like 30 fauna and like four levels and then we said, oh, you know what, um, the way our special system works is not fun because you have to trade specials for health and no one's going to choose specials so like suddenly it becomes very hard to rework the systems because we already built so much around it so that's one thing that you know i would have done differently another thing i might have done differently but i'm still unsure of is like try to automate more things so right now all of our levels are like basically hand crafted mm -hmm. uh, the the problem with that is like the levels don't change, so the replayability of the game is not as high as in, let's say, a roguelike where the levels are generated. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, yeah, our team, we spent a ton of time like iterating on these tiny changes when I think we should have been saying, like, oh, what if we could just, like, you know, write an algorithm to generate the dungeons? Like, of course, it would have to be good, but I think it's definitely not impossible to make a good one. No, that and would actually... More fun to, like, yeah, just, even just to play for myself, right? Because once I beat the level, I'm like, I already know what's coming. But if I can yeah. write an algorithm that surprises myself, then it's like, oh, wow, this is actually, like, always fun because I don't know what's going to show up. Right, and that would serve to the purpose of also playing again and getting to the top and, you know, you have a completely different experience and you get to the top and you face your past save file, you know? Right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's something, as a small team, something we could have done is... um. Right now, the game, like, I mean, the, the estimated game time was, like, oh, to 20 hours or so, right, to reach the top, or, like, somewhere between 10 to 20. Mm -hmm. Maybe something could have done is said, like, oh, it's actually going to be, like, more roguelike-ish than Metroidvania-ish. So it takes, you know, an hour to reach the top. But we expect mm -hmm. the player to play it, you know, 10 times. And so suddenly the game is so much smaller, so we can make, like, the polish feel nice, but we can also, like, very explicitly focus on the game should be fun to play again and again. So we have to make sure like each and every fauna is good. Because I think in games like like Pokemon, you can have bad Pokemon and it's okay, right? It's like, okay, but you, people will just skip it. But if suddenly it's like, you know, every Pokemon needs to be good because, you know, we're only playing like Nuzlocke mode and like you don't get to choose. 
it's suddenly like it actually very much matters and you, you want to spend all this time like it's almost perfect again and i think that's something you know i wanted to do i wanted to be able to spend all that time and like not have it be like lost in right yeah i mean that would have been roguelike may have been good for the game yeah especially if it... Yeah, it would have been a different game that's why it's this is a hypothetical yeah i mean that would... you I mean with that you could have done stuff like you know um well you did so well you do points or something it's like well you can unlock this monster now you know on your next right, playthrough yeah, really something like that. Yeah. yeah um and of course you having less than even 150 monsters immediately makes it so that you couldn't afford bad monsters you know right like yeah. th 30 sounds like a lot but to be honest not really you know but i think that's also because we're used to hundreds of <laughs> hundreds of yeah, monsters yeah, yeah. But, um, which, are there any other Monster Tamer games you like? I mean, not even, I'm not even talking about recent indie uh, Monster Tamer games. I'm even talking about stuff like Monster Ranchers, you know, all, all that, Dragon Quest. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the like, weird point about me is I didn't actually know Monster Tamer was a genre until after we had, un after we released the Sky Seeker demo, right? People were like, oh, this is a Monster Tamer game. Oh. And then I was like, oh, I didn't know that existed. <laughs> um, basically the only thing i've ever played is like pokemon um, but i love that game and i i think the the best experience i've had with pokemon is doing a nuzlocke um with friends where like it's like four or three four of us like together playing on like the tv right mm -hmm. and so every time you lose a guy it's a very emotional moment <laughs> and every time someone comes to the rescue it's also emotional because it's like you know we're all in this together we're all cheering for us to win and then you know if like one pokemon survives at one health and then defeats the, the gym leader you're like this guy's a hero you know we're gonna honor him for the next like <laughs> week of our lives so, right it's not a yeah, that, that's probably my best oh, that's pretty good not a personal loss it's a community-wide loss <laughs> It's a community, yeah. That's why I really liked like uh, like Twitch plays Pokemon back in the day. It was really oh, cool because it was like oh, this I've, whole community and we're all like following the same story. And I all, followed like, kind of that invested and cheering. Yeah, until yeah. the end of um, second gen. Now then I stopped, but I, I followed yeah, that every I day. Yeah, I I remember that because yeah. Twitch plays Pokemon when they were going through. Um, I think they did red for Gen One. Mm. Um. Yeah, I think it's red. But anyways, I had dual enrollment, so the first period, senior year. So I had about an hour and a half where uh, I think I had classes on Tuesday, Thursday, so Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I didn't have anything. And so me and my friend would just go to our second period class, uh, the economics class. The teacher didn't care. We just sat there, and we both would just watch Twitch <laughs> plays Pokemon for like the hour and a half. <laughs> yeah. Those are the good days. Oh, but, um, well, first yeah. off. Yeah, I love those. I, I really like games where, like, there's, like, emergent storylines. So, mm -hmm. like, I mean, clearly they didn't plan for Twitch plays Pokemon to happen when they were making the games, right? But I think that's allowed something, it. as a game developer, I really love is, like, 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 for example, like, in Twitch, when the, in Twitch plays, when they have, like, that one ledge that it took, like, two days to go through because <laughs> you kept jumping off. And it's like, okay, no one planned for this, but the fact that, like, oh, all these stories happen that are, like, completely unique to, like, who's playing and, and like, you basically, the way I like to say it is, you know, if a game is a really good storyline, I'm not going to tell my friend about it because, like, he also already knows the story. But if the game has a good emergent story, I can tell my friend and be like, this dude, this super cool thing happened to me personally, and then I want, I want to share it. And I think if, if a game can, like, achieve that, then that, that's a really good thing. Right, well, a game that pretty much doesn't put everyone through the exact same thing, you know? Right, exactly, yeah. Which, what was the reason for you to get into game development? Because, first off, it sounds like, like you said, uh, some good bit of your friends just became also game developers. Like, did y'all just yeah. one day decide to do it together? <laughs> I mean, I I've been building games since, like, super long ago. I started up in, like, building Flash games, basically. <laughs> um and i don't know i just like it i feel like it's a good medium that it's like you, you can express yourself one and then there's a lot of parts you can you can play with mm -hmm. and it's like you know you can make these like experiences where it's 
I'm not gonna put down other art forms. <laughs> right. It's like they're all good. No, but I just think games like you have a lot of freedom. You can do whatever you want, basically. Um, I just like games. I play a lot of them, and it's like it's just one of those things. It's like okay, what's one of those things where you can like, accomplish in life and say, you know, I had a good life. It's like okay, maybe if I make some good games. Right. You can actually point to something and be like, yeah, I did that. Right. It's yeah. It's also just that feeling of like saying, you know, I did it. Because like if you just work like in an office job. It's like okay, what what did you do? I don't know. You can, it's hard to put it into words, right? But if yeah. you're like, you know, you're releasing these like discrete things. You're like, this is what I've been working at. This is like me for that period of time. Do you think you'll ever get good enough at a game that you can just release it as a an actual game, like not just a hobby thing, but you just make it, you put it out, and you may make some money, you may not, but it's not just some project that, you know, summer's coming to the end and school's back. Yeah. I think that's that's been the goal all the time. Like I think this, I mean, so this like you know, summer's coming to an end, school's coming back, has happened in different forms many times. It's like I built games like um, freshman year of college had a, had a nice team, but then like eventually that that died out. Um, but yeah, I think some of the other games like like Iwate and Rain Project, I'm, I'm happy because we got to finish them, hmm. and like finishing them was like very satisfying and said, okay, we're done with this, we're gonna release it. You know, make a few bucks. Not a lot, though. <laughs> but like, I, I was like, okay, we're done. We finished it. We're, we're proud of it. We can like go and think about the next thing. Right. But, um, have you put? So, Pokemon's the only one you played. You've not played any of the indie ones that you found out after you already made up the demo for uh, Sky Seeker. Yeah, unfortunately, not yet. Okay. I mean, honestly, yeah, right. huh? If you have recommendations, I'll check some out. Oh, I do, and right now it's on 50% sale. Okay, what is it? Disc Creatures. What is it called? Disc Creatures. Oh, Disc. Yes, Disc. Oh, Disc Creature. Yeah, D-I-S-C. Okay. Yeah, it should be like 7 bucks and something, I think. It's 50% off. Yeah, yeah, I see it. Yeah, it's real... Okay, it's not the longest game. Not saying it's short... My only real, okay, I have two real critiques, but uh, my only real critique, I think, is that it could have been longer, you know, because it's just yeah, so much of a good game. Good critique to have. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's an amazing game. Uh, they're making a sequel for it, um, but it feels like I could have been playing that when I was four, five, six years old. Like, it's a true... Yeah, yeah. it looks like it. Yeah, yeah I mean, there, there's some indie games that try to mimic retro looking you know just retro games and they don't really accomplish it but that seems like there's nothing out of the ordinary that you're like okay that couldn't have happened on the game boy color you know that system couldn't have been yeah, in there yeah. no i think this creature does a really good job at pretty much imitating a true retro game and um yeah i'll, I'll give it yeah it's the like if i have to only oh, if i only recommend one monster taming game indie monster taming game it's it's this creatures <laughs> okay all right but um what is your favorite Pokemon game since Pokemon's the only one you've played? Favorite Pokemon game. Yeah, I've played them all. Mm -hmm. um, my favorite for nostalgic reasons is like Pearl, I think. I think that was the first game I really beat. Mm -hmm. uh, so it just has like a, a place. And I, I really like the, the world building of Sinnoh. I like the whole idea that, okay, it's like a world, but the world is focused on like these myths. And so, like, every city kind of, kind of has their, like, legends, but then all the legends are actually true and you can, like, interact with them. I thought that was really good. Yeah, I mean, I know, yeah. I mean, it's based on myths, but it, I don't know. Yeah, it does seem more like the real world, where you do have myths, you know, versus just there's a super evil group that you got to go beat, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, once again, like, I'm not so like, I you could just say there's an evil group to beat, and I'd be like, okay, sure. Oh, yeah. I'll roll with it. Um, but yeah, I, I I agree. Some, you know, some stories are just more interesting than others. I per only problem I have because I have pearl, diamond, and platinum. Only problem I have with them is it's I think the slowest to start because yeah, of the. I, I would say, yeah, that's a problem all the games have. It's because they need to teach it to people who've never played the genre before. Yeah, and so you can't really have a good option of just being like skip, skip, skip. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, you could, <laughs> but I don't know. They haven't done that. 
Yeah, I, w- I wish they would. But um, yeah. I mean, even after you go to the first town, after um, was it not Little Root? Uh, what is your Unclean Leaf? I think. Right. Yeah, I forgot what it's okay. called. Uh, the first town, but then when you get to you start going to the next town, even after that, you go into the grass, and finally they teach you to catch a Pokemon. Yeah, you know, <laughs> like it, the tutorial extends that long. Yeah. But um, honestly, my favorite Pokemon Yellow is the first one I ever played, though. So oh, nostalgia. Yeah. Um, but if I had to put aside my nostalgia. I think Heart Gold Soul Silver. Yeah, uh, I would say that that's very high up there. Yeah, it's very solid. It is a if you want okay, if you want to see a good uh remake, Heart Gold Soul Silver, you know. But Yeah, good games, Heart Gold. Oh yeah, good games, Heart Gold, Soul Silver. Um you know my Discord's name's HG twenty two, so you can guess. Oh, that comes from that's... <laughs> technically soul silver is my favorite out of the two yeah. but um it's one of those i made the account soul silver for pokemon.com and i needed something else for other pokemon tcg things so i was like oh heart gold whatever mm-hmm. <laughs> but um do you have any thoughts on what you will be developing next do you have already an idea or is it you are right now just in the mindset of Time for school. <laughs> I'm not even in school yet, but yeah. Um, I'm thinking about things. I have like a... I don't know. I've been thinking there's, there's like... The style of games that I, I just enjoy in general are these like like action... Like 2D, basically arcade style games. Now I'm, a, I, I'm the kind of guy who just like... I just want some dope for me, you know. <laughs> I want to play a game, and I want to, I want to feel satisfaction. I want to feel like I'm getting good. Right. So a lot of my games like kind of center around that. Uh, there's also like part of me that wants to do some like weird games, right? Like just experiment with ideas. I think the games. I don't. Can you hear this? Oh yeah, but don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think it's someone outside. Um, yeah, but. Weird games, I want to, I think a lot of, like, the games industry is, like, pretty saturated. Hmm. Uh, but I'm not saying that's bad. There's a lot of good games coming out. But I do want to think, like, I always like to think, okay, so it's, like, weird ideas we haven't explored. Uh, I think that's cool. Like, so aside from games, like, the place, like, I, I'm a researcher, right? So I, I do, like, AI research. Hmm. So there's a bunch of, like, kind of interesting ideas involving that. So, like, games where, okay, you're, 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 you're playing with, you know, an AI that not only is hard coded but also kind of like learns. So it learns to like uh, play along with your style, or like learns to counter you. Um, or games where like you kind of interact with the world in these like non-trivial ways, where the world is like like a system. So I, I like I like games that also that that have like kind of complex systems. Mm-hmm. So I, I I played a lot. Of, I play like you know games like like Civilization. I think is is really nice. Yes, it's, it's like you 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 can kind of like do something and then the repercussions you know you won't under fully understand them until like you know two hours later and you're like oh this all came back to that one decision and and things like will like bounce around and like, things will kind of form even if you're not playing like the world itself is just doing some interesting stuff right to you it seems unpredictable pretty much yeah mm-hmm. yeah just more difficult games which is what seems like the recurring thing uh with your taste is just just like you said get good you know <laughs> which is <laughs> good Honestly, most yeah. games, most games, are not like that anymore. Uh, I feel like most yeah. just kind of baby you, honestly. Especially the bigger games. Indie games, a little I bit different. That, yeah, I think that's true with bigger games. Yeah, I think indie games, there are some very hard games, but yeah, bigger games, they they have to have a big audience, I guess. Yeah, but I mean, they had a bit big audience before. It was pretty much just watch this cutscene and then press a few buttons and then watch the next cutscene and. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but no, um, the one thing I did like about Skyseeker is just, uh, oh man, honestly, there's a ton of things I love about it. I like the battle system because I didn't know of another monster taming game that had a battle system like that. I like the look of it. Nothing. I like the movement. Um, like the big bear that had the roll. I think he was the one that had the, the one that the could roll. One. Yeah. The cave bear. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, he was my go-to, um. Yeah, he was a good guy. Uh, 
I don't know. I like the role. Uh, you could easily get <laughs> yeah. around opponents like that. Yeah. Yeah, I tried to do that, like to have a lot of these. Basically, I, I like games where you have a lot of agency. It's like I can choose to run around or I can choose to go all in. And it's like up to you. And if you mess it up, that's your fault. It's not like I'm yeah. forcing you to, to do what you want to do. Well, I mean, it does two things. One, it makes it so that your choices are actually meaningful versus the games that are no matter what your choice is, it's pushing you one way. That's right. not fun. Yeah. Because then also you have the problem of sometimes it's just luck that you lose when you have that kind of stuff. When you don't have control over it, it's just, oh, well, why did I lose? Well, I literally could not have done anything about it versus, well, why did I lose? Well, I can actually improve here, here, and here, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so I completely understand. No, but, I but, um, yeah, thank you for doing this interview. I mean, I, first off, I didn't even know it was a summer project. You know, I just thought that the scope had just gotten too big and you all were just moving on to different games. I mean, I knew you did stuff um, more on an academic level. So I was thinking, how in the world did he fit the two together? But <laughs> it's not like it had to be like uh, uh, all the other games I made was also during school. Right? It's not like it was like a force thing, but it was more like, OK, this is just like one of the one of the. Reasons. Right. Have you ever thought about doing like those 48 hour jams or game things? Yeah, I love game, game jams. I do them quite often. Oh. Hm. Yeah, I, I have a lot of fun in those. It's because you, you don't, a, a lot of the fun is you don't have to make. So I think if you want to make a good game, like a real good game, you hm. need to get like, like a hundred things correct. And if you mess up a single one, people are like, this part sucks. Yeah. But if you're doing like a game jam game, you can just focus on one thing and make it really good. And everything else can be bad, and you can say, that's okay. Like, just don't pay attention to that. So you can have a game where, like, oh, I'm only focusing on the puzzle and the, the graphics are crap. And it's like, that's just how it is. And then people will not, won't really judge you for that. Mm -hmm. So I like game jams for, like, that kind of freedom. So game, even though it's kind of a hobby, um, mm -hmm. programming when it comes to games is definitely something that you, you're going to keep doing. Uh, well, it seems like a long time. You've been doing it for a while, so yeah, it's been a long time. <laughs> I'm not gonna really, yeah, I'm not gonna stop. Hopefully, you eventually come back to. I mean, whether Sky Seeker or a new version of Sky Seeker, or it's another monster taming thing, or mm -hmm. you, I mean, hopefully you come back to the idea because it definitely Sky Seeker was one of the earlier monster taming indie monster taming games that I kind of um, picked up, and mm -hmm. honestly while there's a lot of other good ones, it was one of the more fun ones. One of the ones that it's late at night, I just want to turn my computer and play something, you know? Yeah, oh, well, that, that makes me happy to hear. Yeah, and that's exactly what Sky Seeker was. And it wasn't stale, um, you know, mm -hmm. and you go one direction and you keep going in that direction because there's just more to the map, you right, know? Yeah, yeah. So, and on top of that, it's not just that there's 30 monsters and you have these options, but it's also... It isn't just like you're facing one enemy. It's this monster versus the other 30 monsters. Um, right. So you have to adjust. Yeah, yeah, exactly. you, you cannot just be like, I'm going to keep standing here and attacking them. No, you, you'll die. You know? Mm -hmm. But that's one. Um, no, Sky Seeker is a good game. Uh, I mean, I'm going to say sad in it. It didn't get finished, but the demo is extensive and it, it's good. Period. Oh, yeah. Thank you. That makes that makes me happy. But before we end it, is there anything, I mean, whether it's plugging your own stuff or uh, saying anything about the game or anything, you know? Yeah, no, I mean, just, uh, yeah, keep an eye out. We'll be back. <laughs> and I'll put the uh, link, if you're fine with it, I'll put the link in the description below to your Discord group if you want that. Oh, yeah, 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 sure. That would be great. All right, then. Well, thank you very much for uh, doing this interview. You know, you didn't have to, yeah, especially. Yeah. Having... That's yeah. A lot of fun. Well, all right. Well, uh, I guess this is the end. <laughs> good talking all to you, right. man. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was good. And, uh, yeah, keep me updated if anything else. I will. All right. See you. All right. Take care.